Hi and welcome to Selfmade. Uh, two years ago or so we made a pump action syringe shotgun. Today we take care of uh, yeah, something heavier as you can see. A sniper, pretty accurate. I uh, accurate. I hit a, a two cent coin on uh, 60 feet so uh, yeah it is, it is pretty accurate and um, yeah how to make it. I'll show you. Let's go. See what is my success and my failure while I'm making stuff. Um, while well, I'm actually fabricating stuff for the first time now, it's uh, a bit more complicated. So I just show you what I did and how I did it, and all the fabricated parts um, while putting it back together. And we start with the most complicated part. People keep asking me. Um, <clears throat> the shotgun had the same uh, wooden block in it, just uh, like 18 millimeters, almost like an inch of wood, and then you put in. 6.5 millimeter hole from the from the top um, in case you're using like me using six millimeter BBs my barrel is seven millimeter of diameter inner diameter is 6.1 enough clearance like on the ammo shoot for the BB and on this side the syringe goes in syringe not syringe so an 8 millimeter hole will do for a 100 milliliter um, syringe and that's actually it. The barrel is cut open like this and this leaves a tiny um, bottom section and the ball will just go in here and then you push it into the barrel with the air and that's it actually our base part or our base for the rifle is a u-section aluminum uh, no aluminum u-section and another u-section where the one inch wooden block fits right in there goes in here and now you have so to speak your receiver and your barrel already on Next is the syringe and I made a cut and don't wonder it's a regular L shape just uh, cut out here for the, the springs will uh, shear it and I don't want to touch it don't want them to touch it because it, uh, they lose force just a bit but still and then you just drill holes where the syringe is hitting it and I just uh, mark them, drill it holes, attach it, and uh, yeah, then you can attach the U section, put in the syringe, and screw it on. Ready for the next step. And two tiny pro, trip, uh, <coughs> pro tips. I uh, cut off the tip of the syringe. A bit just to make sure it's not um, diameter is not too low and enough air gets right through it and for the guy um, asking how do you keep the BBs from rolling right through the barrel um, on the other side into the wood you drill a hole and glue in a strong magnet and that way uh, it's barely enough force to uh, make sure they stay in place but they won't stick to the to the wall um, too badly, so they can still. And now, reattaching the syringe holder. Syringe back on top. Now we take care of the plunger. The top rubber right here is cut down a bit at least it has uh, two of those two lips um, sticking out a bit to make sure it's airtight uh, for the medicine whatever you uh, want to inject for us it's a bit of too much of friction so I cut them down to make sure it goes in and out more softly and smoother and uh, it's attached to this plate of aluminum uh, three millimeter I bend it and um, put in two M5 screws on each side and it's held in place or um, on the 
plunger with M3, uh, M3 th screws, four of them. Right through here, spacers, five millimeter plastic spacers. Um, in the middle, you can barely see, there's a nut holding this little rod here. And it's an M4 uh, threaded uh, round bar with another nut right here to hold it in place. So two nuts to make sure it stays on the plate. This is a brass tube, four millimeter inner diameter. And now it all makes sense. This little thing will make sure it can't escape from the lock mechanism, which is up for explanation next. And that's the plunger. I put it back in, screw this back on, and then we are ready for the next step. The trigger is explained in a different, uh, in another video on my channel. I hope I keep in mind to uh, link it in the description. It's basically just a, a lock you can use for pretty much uh, anything you want. And when the tension spring is pulling in this direction, then the rod will um, prevent an escape, basically. It locks in place and it can't go up and over and that's it actually. That's why we have this little brass rod here. And then you can... Yeah, this and of course the top cover which uh, goes on right here will also prevent going off anytime you don't want it to. So. But now you know this is just a uh, safety measure, so to speak, um, to make sure you uh, will never trigger a shot without pulling the trigger. And actually, that is it. And to check clearance, I always put in a BB and let it all roll out. And then you know. There are no uh, wooden fuzzles in there, keeping the holding the uh, BB back. And now you are actually uh, ready to test fire. Well, I would uh, put on the top cover, and the top cover also holds the restrictor, so to speak, for the the magazine. It's actually just a strip of aluminum and an o-ring on an M5 screw and it will just push from the uh, top side and make sure that no, no air can escape and that's actually it. Very simple, very effective, efficient, whatever you want to call it. and. Uh, Nothing but good experience with it, so I just keep it that way. Um, it holds up to um, 10 BBs, or no, 8 BBs, plus or minus 1. And um, yeah, now i show you how I did it. Basically just uh, pieces of aluminum. And there you go, right there. always mark which one is left and which one is right. Almost screwed up. There's a tiny black L. So it's left. And right here I attached the foregrip, just because I find it cooler and easier to uh, to uh, hold a still when aiming. Steady aim is very important. And the counterpart to, uh, oh yeah, the counterpart to our little um, bent aluminum plate is rectangular uh, aluminum pipe, 5 millimeter spacers to make sure it can bridge over the syringe.
like this. And as on the plate, we have M5 screws holding them, the springs I mean. Works fine, none of them ever came off, so uh, it's pretty safe I think, and uh, works fine. Two springs on each side. I will put on the other side parts and uh, I'll see you in a bit. And the last piece you really have to put on is a grip. I just used uh, the same um, one inch wood for the grip and I also made a sock for it. A bit too fancy for you with all the holes. I'm a poor fan, what can I say? Uh, and it's more lightweight that way, so not even just uh, because it's fallouty, just because uh, it's sensible. Exactly. And um, I'm going to uh, probably dye this or paint it black. I'm not sure yet. Also paint black the um, grip. And you don't have to do that. I don't know how you like your rifle. I like it with my stock. So, um, yeah, from here on, it's actually up to you and your creativity. Uh, front grip, grip, the trigger, you now have the basics to make such a rifle, um, the rest is totally up to you. I would keep the, the plates and all the frame work as it is to make sure it works uh, fine and safe. Tiny deodorant cap, around 4 meters away, 5 shots, then the tape. Black circles on them. Let's see. I'll put Not bad. And now let's go outside. Back from the shooting, back on the wall, and for the next time, for the next video, and um, this one took a while, sorry for that, but it was quite a challenge to make this one actually. And for the next video, I'm thinking about making such a bipod, because it's uh, self-made as well, with a slide, looks and works awesome. Or <clears throat> a rifle sling, not really too difficult, but uh, yeah, let me see what you want to see next rifle related or uh, something else talk to me don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time